Let's return to the New Zealander who survived the shipwreck in Fiji and says he feared for his life as his yacht smashed into a remote reef in the middle of the night, 400 kilometres southeast of Suva. Remember, there was no moon and there was a king tide, so the radar didn't pick up on the reef. Wellington coffee pioneer Jeff Marsden was heading from Picton to Tonga with four crew, including SV Jungle owner. Peter McLean, when the 61-foot yacht struck the reef. This is an extraordinary story, first of really bad luck, then of really good luck. Let's start with Jeff saying the impact was like a freight train hitting a brick wall. And I just said, hey, we're going to hit a reef. Like, just shouted at everyone. Two people were asleep, and there was one person down at the nap table. And uh, it just went crash, it ride right up onto the reef, and um, straight away, a massive wave came. We got into the into the uh, white water, the mast came down straight away. Um, pretty horrific stuff. Yeah, terrifying, because because what the hell do you do? It's completely dark. Well, uh, what did you do? So we, everyone was up, everyone was in total shock. It's like, you know, hitting a freight train, you know, hitting a brick yeah. wall. We were sailing really fast. We were sailing at about 10 knots. So the, what we all know now is we were, the, 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 the the bugger was it being high tide on the radar not picking it up. Yeah. It was a bugger, but the but being high tide was our saviour because we went onto the reef. It was a king tide. If we had hit, if it had been low tide and we hit the reef, the waves were it was a massive wave, massive swell. We would have rolled onto the reef, and it would have been it would have been a whole different story. We rode up onto the reef. The rig came down. Um, no one got hurt. I something hit me across the back, but no. I mean, a, a big on a big boat like that. She's a thirty-ton boat, sixty-one feet, huge r big rig on it. It all came crashing down. The boom went across the companion way, and then what? What, what, the, what happened was it jammed one of our life rafts. It took out on that boat. We've got SSB, we've got VHF, we've got Sat Phone, we've got Sat Text. My Sat Text got washed overboard straight away because it was up at the Dodger. Our sat phone with the first wave got taken out by the wave. Our SSB aerial got taken out when the rig came down. Our VHF aerial and our, another emergency sat phone got taken out by the boom. So it was like, it was just bang, bang, bang. Holy moly. You've, done, then, a lot, you've done a lot of sailing. Uh, 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 forgive me for I've asking. Been sailing, I've been sailing with the, 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 the guy on this boat. Uh, for, uh, I've been at sea with him for 35 years since I was 15. And we've sailed all around the world on yeah, that boat. Yeah, you have. So, so then, so then there, was, there was me and Peter McLean and his son Sam, who owns National Candles. We've done heaps of sailing together. And then my good mate Roger Young, the unofficial mayor of Cuba Street, who's yeah, got Fidel's. Yeah, 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 I know, Roger. So we're all, we all had that 30 seconds as, is this how we're going to die? So um, you don't really want to get out onto a reef in the middle of the night? No. And, and, and I'm going to state the blindingly obvious, but I think now is the time for me to do it. You made it, right? Yeah, totally. Yeah, which is a which totally is a wonderful it. thing because you must have been bloody terrified. Oh yeah, you just you know you saw your kids' faces, your wife's, your lovers' faces, like just all our partners. We we, we all looked at each other and we, we know that we all thought we were going to die. Um, we just thought, yeah, it's the worst scenario, you know? And then so we, it was straight away, it was like, right, abandon, sh get shoes on, get a grab bag, get your life jackets on, grab some food, grab the flares, you know, grab the, you know, everything, set off an e perp. But when you set off an e perp, you don't know that anyone can hear you or see you. So we then got up, on, so then the boat started breaking on the reef, and the boat started, quite a lot of water was in the boat at this point, so we were grabbing food and everything, we were quickly eating some food. It sort of slowed down a little bit. It went from, like, everything was, we were going to die to, like, we had a little bit of time all of a sudden because the boat wasn't breaking up straight away. It wasn't, there was waves washing over but not coming into the boat. Um, but the boat was, you know, sort of bouncing on the reef and we didn't know at any point it was going to crash over. We're so lucky none of the windows punched yeah, in them with the yeah. wave. So we got out and we sat there. We had our, we were having turns of holding the e and then, so at this point, it would have been probably, I don't know, it went, three hours went really quick because, the you know, at sea, the thing is you, you never leave your boat until the last resort. So when it started becoming light, we could see an island. So we thought, wow, there's an island there. So we couldn't see anyone on it, but that, all of a sudden we all feel better because we thought, well, we can get on a life raft and get to the island, but the wind was blowing the wrong way. Um, we had a, we also had a, a big um, inflatable tender with an outboard on it, but that just got ripped off and cracked, smashed to pieces straight away when we hit the race. So we'd lost our tender. There's no way we would have bounced to launch it. 
Anyway, so as light came, probably about 8 o'clock in the morning, the tide, we actually realised the tide was going out, so we were actually on the reef at this point. The waves were still crashing around us, but um, the tide started going out, and we were talking about we wouldn't, you know, uh, you know, if we do, if we got saved, or we didn't get saved. We wouldn't. We would definitely wouldn't spend the night on the boat. We'd have to get off the boat if it lasted that long, and get to shore. So we were talking about ways of how we could do it. We were going to get the fenders and tie them together, and some long ropes and swim together. And we had wet weather gear and life jackets and shoes on for, for the reef because the worst thing is getting on a reef. The coral just cuts you open. Yeah. So at about eight o'clock in the morning, or we when I, I went through that whole thing where I hallucinated planes. I totally heard a helicopter. I imagined people on the beach. Um, sorry, I just hit a bit of No, it's a big thing. About, it's a big thing you've been through. At about, um, oh, there's a funny bit coming up. <laughs> at, uh, at 8 o'clock in the morning, we saw someone on the beach. And we went, wow, there's someone on the beach. So we set, we set a flare off. And, um, and then they sort of kept walking like they didn't actually notice us. And there was three people and a dog. And we set up another flare, and then they sort of got on the lagoon, and they were, we couldn't tell if they were coming to us. We could see them in a far lagoon. They looked like they were just fishing. And we were, like, shouting. We had a horn. We honked the horn. We set off another flare. And we, I thought, this is my, sorry, excuse my language. I thought, this is my last chance. I got one, one chance here. So we were, I wanted to walk along the reef in my wet weather gear and with a life ring and try and get closer to them. And everyone was telling me not to do it, not to get in the water. But I, I knew I had one shot. But it was probably a little bit bad protocol. But anyway, I left, everyone was watching me, and I got to the edge of the reef where they were, and I was shouting at them, I was shouting, hello, hello, and they were sort of ignoring me. And I was just like going, help, help. And they're sort of looking at me, and, and they were fishing with snorkels and mass, and they were just like waving with big Fiji and grins. I'm thinking, this is not how I thought it would be. I'm, 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 I'm on a reef, I need to get rescued, and you're waving at me. Anyway, so then I started shouting, bulla, 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 bulla. Full of an arca. And um, when this big grin came out and he saw me and he started coming towards me and as he was real apprehensive. And I said, how come you're not coming to me? He said, so they, they, they all came at once. And we said, we need a help. We need you to help us. And they were really friendly. It was so amazing. And straight away we felt good. And we got to the boat and we said, well, he said, what, how come you didn't want to? They, they were a bit weary anyway. They, they quickly helped us off the boat and helped us along the reef. Um, we just all we got was our passports and a couple of bits and pieces, and they helped us along the reef. And we got went through a, sort of through the water, sort of swimming and along the reef and everything. And we just got to the beach, and as we just got to the beach, um, the Orion flew over, so it was midday. So the, at that point, I just became a blithering mess. Um, but then we walked along into this, this little village. This village is really basic. Like I, I do a lot of travelling to remote places. I mean, we were actually heading to, to Tana Island where we grow coffee in the Vanuatu group, but. But we sort of got there, and then straight away, the, these people they, they had nothing, and they gave us the, you know, they gave us rugby shirts to put on, and we were sitting. Well, they made us a hot cup of tea, and, um, and it was just, I mean, it, it was, it was, you know, it was pigs and chickens. Well, the first thing they said to us was, "There's, there's rats on this island," and we were thinking, "Oh, rats, yeah, <laughs> rats." But when we got there, there was hundreds of rats just everywhere, like you know. And they said that they came in swarms at night. They said they came like. They said armies of rats come at night, so it was like, and they weren't joking. But anyway, they 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 killed three chickens and they cooked us a big dinner, and we sat around. We'd actually rescued a bottle of Cuban rum off the boat because we knew that we all needed it. When when the when the when the Fijians came and we were getting off, we thought we all needed to have a rum together. It was one of the one, one things we got off the boat was some Cuban rum. We all sat down, had a big banquet with them, and and it was just the, the most amazing night. Um, I mean, we were obviously happy to be saved, and they gave us their beds. They they lay lay next to their beds and gave us their beds, which is unbelievable. Um, and we had a wonderful night together. And then the next day at low tide, we all made it back out to the boat. The navy turned up, and um, we gifted the boat's a write off, uninsured total write off. Beautiful boat. Um, and we went out with it. We got onto the boat and got some stuff. But basically, we've gifted everything on that boat to the islanders. Uh, the, the other four people, they just thought, they said that, that in that morning that they didn't know, that they, they said, we didn't know you were going to meet us, you didn't know we were going to meet you, only God knew. Well, I'll tell you what, they, they thought it was Christmas. <laughs> Good. That's... They've, they've, now, they've now got beautiful crockery, and they've got untold, they've got so much New Zealand meat, and they've got Baileys, and they've got safety gear, they've got VHF, they've got life jackets, they've got, they've, not, I think if we ever go back there, is that uh, you know, they'll be able to put, they'll be able to winch out a sun sail over the <laughs> probably, Brilliant. 
Jeff Marsland, telling the extraordinary story of really awful luck, followed by quite remarkable luck that they hit a reef near that tiny bit of habitation, really in the middle of nowhere.